Give me some more. I love more. I would say that this game more. needs to be played to be believed, well, but I'm gonna more. tell you now, nobody should more. buy this game ever. Well, Stick around to find out why. My name is Groudon, I'm reviewing Steam games in alphabetical order, and this is Member the Alamo. Let's dive in. Member the Alamo was released in 2020 and is a historical fiction FPS with sitcom elements and ties to the far-right Nazi movement. Yes, you heard that correctly. It has sitcom elements, and they're terrible. According to top scientist Dr. Wee Line, it's guaranteed to drop you dead if you go into battle. He's true. My first thoughts in the opening moments of this game were, oh hey, this looks good. The old school computer setup, the light streaming in through the window, it looks really cozy. These thoughts were incredibly short lived as things begin to quickly devolve into a nonsensical mess that may actually be so much of a parody of a parody that it becomes serious again. I've finished the game and I can't tell if many of the events are meant to be humorous or serious, so I'm going to assume that they are serious, which has some terrifying implications. To help you understand what I mean, here's the series of events that occur in the prologue of the game. After a series of bizarre commercials and phone calls, including a music video with a Cardi B parody, your mother breaks into your room, accuses you of playing with yourself, and then a sentient gun called Betsy flies through the window and recruits you to fight for the Texans. After a short conversation, you climb onto their back and are flown out the window and into a downtown area, chased by the police including your mother in a helicopter who crashes into a building and explodes, and eventually fly through a portal. All to the tune of an anime-esque opening song. So, now that we're all on the same page of how utterly confusing this all is, let's add the cherry on top. After passing through the portal, you arrive in the Alamo and are treated to a minute-long musical number before eventually falling to your death in slow motion, only to be reincarnated as a ghost to fight for the Texan army. After a brief five-minute conversation about whose fault it is that you're dead, you're finally let loose and instructed to shoot at the enemies crossing the wall. Of course there's a wall. It's always about walls with Texans. Walls and Texans go hand in hand, just like cousins in Texas. At this point, I discover the funniest part of the game. Using the default pistol weapon has so much kickback that it physically pushes you backwards whenever you shoot. Things wrap up with another short conversation and then something happens that didn't click the first time I heard it. At the end of each section, there's a musical sting like you'd expect to hear at the end of a sitcom episode, and a Looney Tunes style effect followed by a fade to black. This game is actually trying to make me feel like I am playing out a sitcom. Now, from a technical standpoint, the gameplay has been fine so far. Movement feels a bit floaty and disjointed, and the gunplay is, well, it's functional. Graphically speaking, it's not great, but it's not awful. It's got a cartoony, stylistic vibe, which is relatively consistent, but everything just feels really flat and bland. And unfortunately, things only get worse from here. The next level is a tutorial about pushing over ladders to prevent enemies from climbing up. This is done by simply bumping into them. I would have thought that using a button prompt or a melee attack would be correct, but no. Pushing the ladders over causes any enemies currently climbing them to, well, explode. Alrighty then. At this point, I notice that the flag attached just here is only visible from one side. Now, it's things like these that show a real lack of care and attention to detail in games. And yet, the bell makes a different sound to everything else when it's shot. Backup's coming in. Look at him go. Apparently, that was important enough to include. We're then told that we're now on ladder pushing duty, and that's... That's the end of the level. And the little musical sting plays again.
While the next level loads, I'd like to point out that the game's logo was animated incorrectly and only spins 180 degrees instead of a full 360. We're going to call this next level, Level 1, as the previous two were really only a prologue and a tutorial. This is the first real level that gets into the core of the actual gameplay, which essentially boils down to defending the main building from the approaching enemies. The level begins with a trumpet fanfare where the game freezes for almost 20 seconds. I honestly thought it had crashed, but no, this happens at the start of every level from now on and freezes just long enough for the fanfare to complete, so I can only assume that it's intentional. Once the real firefight begins, the issues with the game quickly reveal themselves. In addition to the guns feeling just awful to use, they also have the weirdest reloading animation I've ever seen, where you seem to shake the gun around wildly and the gun just kind of reloads itself. The battle is somewhat impressive, with a relatively large number of enemies on screen at once. I say relatively because it seems that there are as many enemies on screen as the game engine can possibly handle, causing it to freeze and stutter at times. So much so that I decide to try and pause the game to reduce the graphics setting to hopefully make it run more smoothly. Instinctively, I press escape to open the menu only for me to realise that the game was continuing behind the menu screen. Regardless, I quickly lower the settings slightly and continue. After firing off another few shots, the game freezes again, so I go to mess with the settings some more, only this time I remember that I saw in an earlier hint that pressing P will pause the game. So I press P. The game pauses, but no menu appears. But now pressing escape won't open the menu either because the game is paused. So I unpause the game, and suddenly the menu appears, but now my cursor doesn't appear because the game thinks I'm still playing. And just, why is a simple options menu so difficult? What was wrong with having the escape key both open the menu and pause the game? I'd love to say that this was the most frustrating part of the game, I really would. But it's not. I press on and make a new discovery. There are items that sometimes drop when killing an enemy. These could be health, extra ammo or even money. The second new discovery I make is that collecting money has a continuous visual effect. No idea what money is for at this stage, I assume upgrades or repairs to buildings, something like that. The third new discovery is that getting hit makes a water splashing sound effect and sprays blue paint all over the screen. Why? Who knows? Annoyingly, I discover all of this at the same time, and my vision is almost completely obscured. After shooting more enemies and collecting items with my eyes and ears being assaulted by visual effects, I suddenly win. No idea why or how, as I haven't been told how to win a level. I assumed that I needed to kill all of the enemies, but there were clearly some still alive when it ended. So it's either a set number of enemies that need to be killed or a time limit to survive. No idea, and to be honest, I don't really care, because I'm not having fun. Having finished the first level, we're then treated to a conversation between Betsy and some other dude whose name I don't remember, where they offer to explain what money is used for. This is preceded by a five minute discussion on how banks work and how money is made up. You also get an achievement for this, one that definitely insinuates that banks can't be trusted. It was at this moment that the tip of the tinfoil hat of conspiracy theories started to show itself. The second level is much like the first, only you can now purchase three different things with your money. The first is a soldier who will fight for you, or at least I assume they do as they run off and are never seen again. The second is a bear trap, which again I never actually saw in action. And the third is extra ammunition for your assault rifle. Good old America. Survive another round of combat, this time with giant red melee fighters and uh, Cthulhu style floating eyeballs. And then you're on to the next mission, this time a sitcom moment. One of the NPCs who I care about as much as Texans care about raising the minimum wage has drunk himself to death and we are tasked with reviving him by punching the ghostly manifestation of his heart for nearly a minute straight. If it were once, sure. Twice, alright. 
Three times? Okay, because a lot of gaming follows the rule of three trope. But forcing a player to mash one button for an entire minute to save an NPC we have no reason to care about is a new low. If you want players to quit your game, this is how you do it. As proof of this, only 14.2% of players have the achievement for doing this. This moment is less than an hour into the game and already nearly 90% of people have put the game down and will never pick it up again. In all fairness though, that's why I love this series. I get to see things that only a small percentage of the population would ever see or experience. And I'm confident that it's going to scar me for life. Anyway, we move on to level three and there isn't anything new to be found here. It's the same as level two, just with different enemy placements. I did die a few times in the process of finishing this level though, because I mostly just kept forgetting that the giant floating eyeballs were a thing. Should have been keeping an eye out for them. <laughs> After finishing the level, we're treated slash tortured by another sitcom intermission. This time we see the perspective of the Mexicans, who are attempting to summon the literal devil to assist them by singing John Lennon's Imagine. Oh, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Just consider what the devs are implying for a second. Let it really sink in. Implications aside, Moments later, they just outright say that the devil himself influenced John Lennon to write the song. Now that is one of the best songs I've ever demonically possessed and influenced someone to write. It turns out that as the devil is only able to influence people to make bad decisions and not directly interfere with the world, he's unable to simply kill the Texans. Instead, he suggests two options. The first is to flood the Texans with incestuous pornography in order to degrade the family unit and destroy society from the inside. The second is to spread propaganda about a new virus that will cause people to fight amongst themselves, spearheaded by a Chinese scientist called Dr. Lai Ying. Yeah. So, I want to make it absolutely crystal clear that I do not support any of these viewpoints under any circumstances. Now, this entire conversation takes about five minutes, and then we're thrust into level four. Level four is the same as level three. Shoot things until you're told to stop shooting things. And then we're launched right into the next sitcom moment, this time taking the sitcom aspect quite literally. We're back in a house and we're all watching TV. And there's even a laugh track this time. The gang all chat for a bit before being interrupted by the devil who tries to convince them that there's an a la malaria outbreak that will kill anyone that goes into battle. That's it. That is the whole skit. It seems that our friends are all present in level five and the implications of the brave and noble Texans ignoring the devil spreading lies of a global pandemic certainly weren't lost on me. Once again, there is nothing new here other than the fact that the game decided to stop counting the cash I was collecting, so I wasn't able to buy anything in this round. This definitely wasn't intentional as it started working again after I died. After finishing the level, we're forced to endure one final quote unquote skit that lasts an entire 18 minutes. Featured this time is a performance of Amazing Grace sung by Betsy the Sentient Gun and then a sermon from a never seen before character. Pestilence is portrayed in scripture as punishment for sin. This sermon gives up all pretense of trying to fit into the game world and basically discusses the belief that pornography and COVID are being used by those with power to control the population and dismantle organized religion. At the end of the sermon, there's even a plug for an e-book he published and it turns out that the author is one Dr. E. Michael Jones. I did a little bit of digging and surprise, surprise, he has ties to the far right movements and extremists. His personal beliefs include Jews being the cause of all the things that he perceives as evil in the world, including the civil rights movement, homosexuality, feminism, pornography, and abortion. To the extent that he supports the views and actions of literal Nazis. 
Oh, and he denies the existence of AIDS. It's at this point that the tinfoil hat is fully revealed and it becomes clear that this game is nothing more than a platform to spread misogyny, hate and the lies of right-wing politics, all under the guise of a cartoonish first-person shooter. Focusing on the gameplay and graphics first, there's really nothing here to write home about. Like the graphics, the gameplay is only surface level and fun for about 5 minutes. There's little to no variety, no tactics and no incentive to replay any of the levels. There is an endless mode available, but after playing through the story, I don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Speaking of the story, it has to be addressed that there is no way for this to be construed as parodying these particular viewpoints and beliefs. The final cutscene makes it crystal clear that the devs support these views. Why else would they include mention of the author and the name of their book? They are promoting these views, which is why I advise staying well away from this game and not supporting the developers financially in any way, shape or form. Because of this, my final rating for the game is a tinfoil hat on the end of a 10 foot pole out of 10. Thank you for watching! If you're enjoying these videos, why not help out by liking the video? And while you're there, make sure to subscribe as well if you want to see more of this weird gaming journey that I'm on. If you've already done both, then hey, thank you, I appreciate you. And until next time, take care.